Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at simplified forms of radicals, specifically when the radicand is numerical. So we're not going to look at variables in this video. Okay, so when is a radical expression in simplest form? If n is the index, so recall that if we have a radical, n is the number that's wedged in between, it's like the little in the check marky deal. If there is no number, then it's assumed to be an index of 2 or a square root. Okay, so n is the index. And the radicand has no perfect powers of n factors besides 1. So it's kind of a mouthful, but it's like if there's, uh, if n is a 3, if it's a cubed root, then we don't want any perfect cubes under the radical. No factors that are perfect cubes. What will be really helpful for this is to know our perfect squares, our perfect cubes, our perfect powers of 4, our perfect powers of 5. Um, the one that we use most frequently is, of course, our perfect squares. So we're going to create a list. I'm going to skip one. One does appear in every single list, and every power of one is also one. So we'll keep that in mind. Okay, great. If x is 2, then we would have 4. 3 is 9. 4 is 16. 5 is 25. 6 is 36. 7 is 49. 8 is 64. 9, 81. 10, 100. 11, 121, 12, 144, 13, 169, 14, 196, and 15, 225. And of course, this is not a complete list. This is just a, a, a nice subset of the ones that we see the most commonly. Okay, our perfect cubes. So again, one is a perfect cube, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one cubed. Um, two is 8. So 8 is the perfect cube. So these are the perfect squares in the second column. These are the perfect cubes in the second column here. Perfect cubes. Uh, next we would have 3 would be 27. 4, the perfect cube of 4 is 64. 5 is 125. 6 is 200 something, 216. I'll double check that. Uh, 7 is 343. Eh, that seems right. And 8, I have no idea. We probably don't need 8. It would be very unusual if 8 occurred. Our perfect powers of 4, we're going to have even fewer because, again, when we're raising things to the fourth power, they get big real quick. So we're going to start with 2, and that would be 16. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. And these don't have a special name. There's not a perfect, uh, we would just say perfect power of 4. Power four. Uh, three would be eighty-one. Four is two hundred fifty-six. Five is six hundred twenty-five, and that's as much as I know. And probably we wouldn't need anything bigger than that anyway. For our perfect powers of five, two is thirty-two. Three is um, oh my gosh, two hundred forty-three. And probably we don't need more than that. So we want to kind of be familiar with these. I would write these down. We're going to refer back to these quite frequently. Okay, so to simplify each radical expression, we do want to keep in mind that we can always split up the factors and rewrite as separate radicands if we want. Um, so we could take, if we have two factors, a times b, we could say, okay, that's the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. The same thing would hold true if we had an index of 3 and we have a times b. Each time we write the radical, we would include that index of 3. Really important we do that, because if you don't include that index of 3, you're changing the problem. Okay, so the square root of 8, we're trying to think, okay, what factor of 8 is a perfect square? And if you need to, refer back to the list. We see right here the 4. 4 is a perfect square, and it's also a factor of 8. So we can rewrite the square root of 8 as the square root of 4 times 2. That would be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. That would be 2 times the square root of 2. And that's as simplified as it can get. I put the dot there. You don't have to. You can just kind of squish them together and say 2 radical 2. The square root of 50. So 50, does it have any perfect square factors besides 1? It does. 25 goes into it, and 25 is a perfect square. So we'll rewrite the square root of 50 as the square root of 25 times 2. If you want to, you can split these up. You don't have to do this step. Just kind of like showing even further. We take the square root of 25. It's 5. The square root of 2 is something irrational. So we would leave it as 5 times radical 2. Negative square root of 72. 72 has a few perfect square factors. And if you don't choose the largest one, so maybe you recognize that 9 goes into it, which is fine. 
that would be negative square root of 9 times 8. That would be negative 9, or negative root 9 times root 8, which would be negative 3 root 8. However, this is not completely simplified because 8 still has a perfect square factor. Let's look back here at this first example. We know that 8, or root 8, simplifies to 2 radical 2. So if we pull that out like this, it would look like this. Then we would take these two coefficients and multiply them together, giving us negative 6 radical 2. Now, that was kind of a long method because it took two steps. We didn't have to do that, but it does require you knowing that 36 is in fact a factor of 72. So instead we could have said this 72 is the same as 36 times 2, and the square root of 36 is 6, so we end up with negative 6 radical 2. So we still end up in the same place, but it did take longer if you didn't choose the biggest perfect square factor. All right, in these three examples, we're going to look at our perfect cubes. Just to refresh our memories, I'm going to go back here. Perfect cubes are 8, 27, 64, 125, 216, and 343. Okay, so 16, does it have any perfect cube factors? Yeah, because 8 is a perfect cube. So we're going to rewrite this as 8 times 2. Then I can split up my radicals and have the cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 2. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And the cubed root of 2 is the cubed root of 2. So it would stay like this. 2 times the cubed root of 2. In the middle, we have the negative cubed root of uh, 54. So what's a perfect cube that is also a factor of 54? And that would be 27. So I can rewrite 54 as 27 times 2. And the cubed root of 27 is 3. There's that negative in front, so I'll bring that negative down. Negative 3, cubed root 2. In the next example, the largest perfect square factor of 128, because there are a few, is 64. So we could rewrite this as the cubed root of negative 64 times 2. Uh, keep in mind this is a cubed root, so the fact that there is a negative under the radical is okay. We will still have a real number uh, expression in the end. All right, so we have the cubed root of negative 64 times the cubed root of 2. The cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. And the cubed root of 2 we leave is the cubed root of 2 because it's some weird irrational number. Our last three examples all have different indices. First, we have the fourth root of 80. So if you need to refer back to our fourth roots, I suggest doing that. I know that one fourth root, our perfect power of four is 16. So I can take this and rewrite this as the fourth root of 16 times five. The fourth root of 16 is two. So I can simplify this and say, well, this is two. The fourth root of five is something irrational. So we would leave it the fourth root of five. In our next example, we have the fifth root of negative 486. Again, it's okay that there's a negative under the radical. It will still be a real number. And we have to think about our perfect powers of 5. So 32 is a perfect power of 5, but I don't think 32 goes into 486. 243 is a perfect power of 5, and it does go into 486. So we can rewrite this as oh, whoa, the fifth root of negative 243 times 2. Uh, the fifth root of negative 243 is negative 3. So we can simplify that. This becomes negative 3. And then we have the fifth root of 2 remaining. And last but not least, oh no, a fraction. It's okay. We can handle this. First thing I would do, I would split these up. Uh, so we're going to rewrite this as the cubed root of negative 108 over the cubed root of 125. I decided to move the negative up. You can move it down. You could just bring it out in front. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're trying to think what's a perfect cube factor of negative 108. That would be negative 27. So we would say negative 27 times 4. In the denominator, uh, 125 is a perfect cube, and its root is 5, so I can just go ahead and take the cubed root of 125. Now the cubed root of negative 27 is negative 3. The cubed root of 4 we're going to leave as 4 over 5. And one thing I didn't mention when I was meant talking about the definition of simplifying a radical expression or what it means, we should always pull the negative out. So if there's a negative under, the, of, under an odd indexed radical, you should pull that negative out and turn it so it becomes part of the coefficient.